Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 7 of the Road to Glory, Youth Road to Glory series here on FIFA 18. We're in January, so as such we are looking to move on a handful of players. Uh, we will simulate at South End here at the beginning of the month. But I am most certainly going to play Everton in the FA Cup and I am most certainly going to play MK Dons as uh, the second game of the episode as well. Considering in the transfer window, and there's hopefully going to be quite a bit of transfer stuff to be dealing with, we'll only have two played games today and we'll simulate the other four and then we'll, uh, we'll push on outside of this transfer window. We still have a little bit of money, about 380k ish in the transfer budget. If we can sell on a couple more players, I would love to bring in a third youth scout if possible. Uh, we, as of yet, don't uh, have the finances to afford anyone that decent, but I'm hoping with some sales towards the end of the month, I might be able to pick up a four star uh, judgment scout by the end of the window. We have a number of in real life players still able to be sold on. Uh, obviously, at present, I'm not looking to sell Quezzy or Lyle Taylor because I don't have any other. Uh, youth strikers that I could call up in their place. I would be willing to sell McDonald though. And uh, of course, obviously we have players like Soares, Hartigan, Trotter, Barcham. All these players, uh, Joe Pigger, Antoine Yame. They'll all be uh, available for transfer. Kennedy as well. Uh, Zanev, the goalkeeper. So uh, there's definitely plenty of money to be or able to be raised. So hopefully we'll be able to do exactly that and raise it. I am going to have to completely change the squad for this game against South End though because everybody's massively tired and I don't want any of my first team players to be injured or to you know have a higher risk of injury with the games against Everton and uh, obviously massive Wimbledon rivals MK Dons on the uh, on the horizon so I'm going to go and fiddle with the first team and uh, make sure that it's suitable for the game against South End so that then I can have my full strength side available to me for the game against Everton and then we'll dive straight into the episode drop the video a like if you enjoy subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content whether it be this series or the Southampton series which of course is going from strength to strength still in season two there was a video uploaded earlier on this afternoon if you missed it but uh, yeah let's crack on shall we South End at home first Right, first team altered, and uh, we'll simulate this game against Southend. Unfortunately, because of the lack of strikers, I'm still having to play Quezzy Appiah and Lyle Taylor. Hopefully, though, we should be able to get a decent result here against Southend. They're not really one of the best sides in the division, but as soon as I say that, Sam Manson gives us the 1-0 lead after 8 minutes, which isn't, isn't exactly the start to the game I was after, but obviously, like we say, a weak side being played in this one. But hopefully we can still do well enough to get something out of it, as Quezzy equalises just before half-time. If we could sneak a winner, that'd be great. Go into the game against Everton at the weekend in good form. We've been in alright form recently. Ah, they've gone 2-1 up there through Ladapo, and it is going to be a 2-1 defeat against Southend. Not to worry, not to worry. We will progress forward towards the Everton game. I've added a handful more players to the transfer list now as well. We'll just have to wait and see if we get any bids in between now and the game against Everton. Uh, this Everton game, obviously, by far the largest test that we've faced so far this season with this Wimbledon team. And I will play uh, a relative first team in it with, of course, not necessarily my strongest side because some of the IRL players are still my strongest players. But oh, I just I can't let Lyle Taylor go just yet, unfortunately. Uh, but I, um, I'm i still going to play a full side of youth players other than Quezzy and Lyle Taylor up top. And uh, whilst they're not... It's not necessarily my strongest 11, uh, because I have some IRL players that are still higher rated. It is obviously more of an 11 that we're leaning towards with this being a youth road to glory. So there'll be a couple of players making their debut, including... Actually, no, Walker just played in that one. But I will, I will start Dave Walker on the left-hand side. He's one of our youth, scout, or youth scouted players that has the highest potential. So we'll have to wait and see how he gets on. But again, I'm going to go and readjust the first thing now that we've simulated that last game. And then I will meet you... In the game against Everton. Right, Everton's starting lineup is pretty strong actually. Jordan Pickford in goal, Kenny Keane, Holgate, and Martina as the back four, which isn't necessarily the best they could put out. It's just a kind of game, Schneidlin though, in holding midfield are two of their best players. Gilfie to Gerton out on the left. Vlasic, Tarashai, and Calvert Lewin definitely aren't that strong though, so they're not necessarily underestimating me, underestimating me, but at the same time, they're not. You know, putting out a massively strong team that would just brush me aside. So we might stand a chance of forcing a replay here if I can play to the best of my ability. Nicely played into Tarasov, looking to just burst in behind. 
Uh, Whitey to Vlasic is in the box. Everton threatening after just a few moments, but Hara picks that off and we will clear it. Oh, dear me. Very nearly Everton creating the opportunity to score extremely early on in the game. Nice ball in there, though, to Ruben Hara, and Lyle Taylor's made a good run. I'll squeeze it back to him, but Kuko Martina read it, cut it out well. Tarashai with a heavy touch. Stoyanov steps in. Walker will recover the loose ball, and Tarashai takes it off Wimbledon man again, and feeding it through to Dominic Calvert Lewin, whose strike is hit against the defender, and we're able to scramble it away before he has the secondary effort. Very close to 1 0 Everton there, or at least the keeper being drawn into uh, a little bit of action, but we're able to defend it well enough and can come away on the counter of sorts. Not necessarily a flying counter-attack, but Lyle Taylor's shot is deflected, and that will be simple for Jordan Pickford. Not necessarily overly uh, under the coffs here, the opening few moments, but there's plenty of time for Everton to ramp up and change through the gears. Vlasic, lovely turn, and again. Through the gap there to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, a nice little one-two. Vlasic drops his soul to Calvert-Lewin. Tried to just guide it into that bottom right-hand corner, but George Long does well to get down to it and stop it from going into the back of the net. A little bit more power on that, and that is certainly 1-0 Everton, but thankfully for me, he hasn't been able to get the uh, the sort of parry needed to get it past the goalkeeper. I'll play that down the line as Wright's made a great run in behind, and Quezzi is there in the middle. Just took Wright a little bit longer to get to the ball, but Quezzi did get to the end of the cross, did he not? I think John Joe Kenny there, just clearing it away. Ruben Hara with the delivery, looping, and Jordan Pickford will come and get it. Sigurdsson to Tarashai to Sigurdsson again. Lovely ball down the line to Dominic Calvert. Lewin is in a good position. Has to look back for support. Tarashai turns. Vlasic, that's off target. I thought for a minute it was going to cause a keeper an issue at that far post. But as you can see from the angle here, he got the movement on the ball, the spin on the ball, but not the bend. Tarashai through the gap to Gilfie. It's not the fastest Gilfie Sigurdsson, but you would have expected a lot better from Gilfie, regardless of the fact it's on his left foot. He just hit that very awkwardly. Everton are seemingly stepping it up a gear, though. I'm finding it harder and harder to keep them out defensively. But the longer it stays at nil-nil, the longer we have a chance of getting A, a replay, or even maybe, maybe, sneaking a winner. But I think that's highly unlikely, although Walker's in here, and Lyle Taylor's at the back post. He's tried to pick out right, and he's misplaced it to Taylor. Back to Hara. Back to Lyle Taylor again. Through that gap to Quezzi. Out of his feet. Quezzi Appiah. Straight to Jordan Pickford. It's going to take something special, I think, from uh, these mid-60 rated players to try and find a way past someone of the quality of Jordan Pickford. But the more you plug away, the more likely you are... Oh, jeeps. The more likely you are of being able to actually find that special something. Oh, he didn't. I thought, it was, I thought it was going to go for the extra turn, and he didn't. I've been foiled by someone running in a straight line. <laughs> he turned the one defender. I mistimed it with uh, Oshelai on the edge of the box there. But I thought he was going to turn again and he didn't. He just kept running diagonally and that's completely sold me. And then he's tucked it away nicely in that bottom corner. Scuffed slightly. Not, real, not really much power on it. But the accuracy was exactly as it needed to be on the brink of half time. It's Everton 1, Wimbledon 0. It's Tarashai to give them the breakthrough. Schneiderlin into Idrissa. Oh, caught me out there. And oh, Tarashai again has done me by running in a straight line. He had that little little wave of the foot, the off-the-ball dribble that completely sold me. Julian Brandt's come off the bench here for them, but thankfully Wright has put an end to his potential attack. Lyle Taylor's made a good run too. And we actually have them on a decent counter-attack here. And Kwesi can keep that run going through the channel. And Lyle Taylor is in the middle. If I can find him, well, maybe Walker at the back post, but the cross takes a deflection. And unfortunately... They'll clear it. That was probably my best chance of a counter-attacking opportunity. But I haven't been able to take it, annoyingly. Stoinov, though, wins that back. We'll play inside here to Walker. We'll look for Quezzi. I'll quickly look to get it to <sighs> Lyle Taylor. But Michael Keane is far too strong. They've just been too good for me to this point, Everton. I think it's going to be a case of them making a mistake that lets me in, more so than me being able to come up with the quality needed to just outright get myself back in the game. But we'll have to wait and see. They still... There's still half an hour plus left to play. Tarasai, oh, I was waiting for the turn. Tarasai could save by long. He's kept me in it there. I'll probably go out for a corner. Julian Brandt will let that run. Right, Everton looking for the second. 
And he might yet get it. Guilfi with the delivery. Oh, I was going to say it's a poor corner, but it still could end up in a goal. But Tarashai loose with a pass, and then I'm loose with a pass for Walker. Oh, I'm going to have to take off sooner rather than later because his stamina is really starting to affect him. Whereas he's got the pace to get away here, though. We haven't really had the chance to utilise that to this point. But if I can play in Lyle Taylor here, we can drop the shoulder on that defender, look to bend it. John Joe Kenny gets in the way. I had a man arriving at the back post. I'm going to take Walker off here. You can see just how much he's struggling for fitness. Uh, let's bring on Harry Forrester on the left-hand side. That'll be the only change we make to this point. And we'll see if we can get ourselves an equaliser from the corner. Lyle Taylor at the near post, headed away by Michael Keane. Bejarano brings it down. Oh, she lads around the corner to Harry Forrester. Immediately on the pitch, and that really wasn't far away at all. Decent effort, but we're still behind. Clarsen into Julian Brandt. They've made their three substitutions now, and Davy Clarsen, being one of them, has immediately had an impact. Played through by one of the other substitutes, Julian Brandt. They've also brought on Tosun up top as well, but it's the midfielder, Clarsen, that gives them the second goal. I think that's us done and dusted now in this tie. There's still 20 minutes left. I'd like to score at least against Everton, but that ball roll and then the switch of direction again is just too good. Quality too much for us here from the Premier League side. Everton 2, Wimbledon 0. Kuko Martina. Back there to Gilfi. Into Chink too soon. Ah, he's turned me. And, oh, a lovely little ball through to Kuko Martina. That's a really nice goal. The little intricate passing is absolutely superb. <sighs> yeah. I guess it's to be expected, but it's still pretty frustrating. 3-0. Back to Abdu. Taylor's there. He was offside. He's turned brilliantly. Lyle Taylor. Oh, no. I've hit the post. Oh, the closest we've come to a goal here at Goodison Park. Our top goal scorer for the season. One of the best players that we've got at the club. One player that I've really properly connected with to this point in the save. Lyle Taylor. Strikes the woodwork here, and we aren't able to get ourselves one back. Stoyanov. Cross to Abdu again. Oh, that was supposed to be a fake turn and I've ended up passing that all the way back to my centre-back. That sums up my offensive play in this game, doesn't it? Oh, desperately unlucky not to have got myself a consolation goal here, but sadly it wasn't to be. Back to Schneidlin. Davy again. Gilfie. Tosun. Clarsen. All right, stop it, lads. Now you're starting to just show off. Nice tackle, but... They've still got possession. Gilfi back here to Kuko Martina. To Morgan Schneidlin. Is this the build-up to goal number four? Ashalaya tries to get there, but he can't. And it is the build-up to goal number four. That's the best move they've put together all game, really. Ending in a goal that makes this, the scoreline look a little bit more one-sided than perhaps it should do. I haven't really been 4-0 bad in this game. Or outplayed as much as 4-0 would suggest. But the changes they made to bring on their first team players had a massive influence on the game. Julian Brandt, David Clarsen and Tosun. Three goals came after those three entered the field of play. So that kind of speaks volumes really, doesn't it? Everton 4, Wimbledon nil. frustratingly. But we are only a League One side with loads of youth players still growing. So we, uh, we should just brush that off and not necessarily get too downheartened by it. Wouldn't have expected to exactly run out 3-0 winners myself, though, would I? So uh, we'll have to just take it on the chin and push forward. I will simulate the game against Blackburn, and then we'll play the one against uh, MK Dons. I just want to see if any of those emails are emails about transfer offers coming in for someone that I could perhaps contemplate selling. I'm still waiting for Bennett's positioning to go up a little bit more. Once it does, I'll throw him in goal ahead of Long. Unfortunately, no. Neither of those emails were about uh, potential transfers incoming. But Blackburn Rovers, oh, prize money. Actually, oh no, I won't get that till next season, will I? I was going to say, actually, that could come in handy. Transfer, oh, Lyle Taylor. I'm going to go and block offers for Lyle Taylor, I think. Because at the minute, I just can't sell him. Uh, set, oh, £76,000 isn't exactly going to make that much of a difference, is it? Right, I'm going to go and block offers for Lyle Taylor. And then we shall, uh, in fact, I'll be able to do it all in the same highlight, won't I? Uh, Lyle Taylor, block offers. I'm not going to bother... Uh, Changing the size, I don't think, for this one against Blackburn. We should just be able to simulate this and not necessarily need to worry too much. Ah, transfer for Tony Civic. That I shall accept straight off the board. Uh, thank you very much, Bohemians. Hopefully they're able to figure out... Another email? Oh, it's just a press conference. Hopefully they're able to figure out uh, contract terms. And hopefully we can get a decent result here against Blackburn. They are one of the best sides in the league, and I think they're top. They're definitely top in real life. I don't know whether they're top 
in this save. But Kwesi Appiah gives us an early 1-0 lead. They immediately hit back through Elliot Bennett after 14 minutes. If we can hold them to a draw, I'd actually be pretty happy with that. I was disappointed to lose against Southend. I would have liked a point from that, but if I can get a point from this, then that'd be great. Uh, now we're 2-1 down, thanks to Marcus Antonsen. And... Last minute equaliser, maybe... No. Okay, 2-1 defeat. Again. <sighs> to be expected, though, I suppose, against Blackburn. We are 17th in the league at present. Blackburn are top of the table. Uh, Southend, 22nd. So we really should have won that, to be fair. Although I did I did completely rotate the side, didn't I? So perhaps if I played my full strength 11, I might have got a win against Southend. But I didn't want to go up ahead, up against Everton with a weakened side. So... Uh, that was the what, the reason why we did it. We can afford... Ah, oh, Tony Civic is sold. That is great news. That adds a little bit more money to the coffers, doesn't it? How much have we got now? Uh, £450,000-ish. How much is a new youth scout? Uh, I could get this three-star, three-star guy. I think it's worth saving, though, isn't it, to the end of the window, rather than rather than just jumping now. Let's Let's wait until the end of the window. And then we can always bring someone in then. Right, I'm going to go and play MK Dons. Because, of course, Wimbledon versus MK Dons is a huge fixture. I apologise for simulating the first game between the two in the season. And uh, hopefully we can come away with a decent result. MK Dons are 11th. We are 17th. Six points above the relegation zone. Seven points off the playoffs still. So it's still incredibly tight in the midfield. Right, MK Dons away. He got over the top for Britain. Yes. Uh, that's not a foul. I just outmuscled him there. Kieran Agard. Oh, what a save by Long. Oh, I get a little bit lucky with the clearance coming back off Ugbo. That was close to 1 0 MK Dons very early on. Luckily for me, we're able to make the save. This bit steals it off Ruben Hara. Agard backing up, waiting for that through ball that now comes through a different channel and squeezed in at the near post by Upson. MK Dons 1, Wimbledon 0. It has been coming even in these opening eight minutes or so. They have started very, very brightly here and we are behind early doors. I thought the through ball was going to come there and it didn't. It went through there. Not that you can see where I'm pointing with my fingers on my monitor, but still, I'm sure you could figure it out for yourselves. Good finish. We're 1-0 down. Forrester. Abdu. Hara. Across to Cooper. Down the line there is Taylor. Into Taylor. Turns well. Across the far side is Harry Forrester. I'll drop the shoulder. Forrester turns well. I'm trying to shoot, but Britain with the strength to outmuscle me. Really disappointed to go 1 0 down so early on here against MK Dons. I really wanted to give them a decent game, but at present, they are showing that they are the better team right now. I'm sure it's all just part and parcel of this first season with young, growing, inexperienced youngsters, as opposed to old youngsters. And uh, over the course of time, we will be able to overthrow MK Dons. But for now, it does appear that we are second best. We'll look for Quezzy. He's running into the channel really nicely. I've got a Banks Landell closing me down. And Oh no, it wasn't meant to go back there. It has reached Ruben Hara. And Taylor turns well. Taylor got those five-star skills, of course. Using a four-star skill move there. And Lyle Taylor's shot is blocked well by a defender. And apparently that's a goal kick. All right, then. There's a bit. Inside to Ugbo. Into Agard. Back to Upson. I can't get the tackle in. Agard with the turn. There, we've got the tackle in. But Agard's just too strong. Q and Agard call me all sorts of problems in this game to this point. Here's Britain. Back to Ed Upson, their goal scorer. To Britain again. To Kieran Agard. Oh, he turned well enough. It's a good save. And I'm trying to clear it first time. And he just wouldn't. But thankfully... Oh, we've been able to get it back to the goalkeeper. Oh, dearie me. Hara, nice ball to Cooper. Now, is the cross good enough? Oh, it's great. And Forrester's unlucky. Lyle Taylor's there to tuck it home. We're level. Brilliant ball across from Cooper, the right back. And to be fair, Harry Forrester should have done better. But let's take nothing away from the goalkeeper there that makes a brilliant close-range save. The cross is perfect. Absolutely perfect. But Forrester should have done better. Lyle Taylor with a little hop. As he uh, tucked it home on his left foot. Kind of a half a De Canio jump, I suppose. But couldn't really miss there, could he? We are level and his 14th goal of the League One campaign. I'm not sure if he's still league top goal scorer. But he's definitely still right up there. 
touch by Dimitrov to Harry Forrester, who spun well. And we'll look for Abdu. Get that to Lyle Taylor. Quezzy's there. Could go for a 1-2. And Lyle Taylor. Oh, deflected. And it took it straight into the midriff for the keeper. So lucky for MK Dons not to be behind as we head in at the break. I can't quite believe that deflection has taken it straight into the keeper's arms. It was destined to just trickle into that far bottom corner. And they're going to go up the other end and go 2-1 up themselves on the counter-attack. Oh, wow. That is desperately frustrating. It could have been 2-1 Wimbledon. It's not. It's 2-1 MK Dons. Lovely ball into the path of Goldborn. To Kieran Agard. Back to Nesbitt. Cissé has turned me somehow there and I've both 3-1. Didn't want to lose this game with the significance of it. And I'm 3-1 down five minutes into the second half. We're in a real tough run of form right now. This will make four defeats in all competitions in today's episode to this point. Not good. Not good. Still 40 minutes to go. I can pull it back. The question is whether I will or not. There's a bit. Around the corner to Britain. Picked off by Osha Lager, but somehow Nesbitt comes away with it there. Not entirely too sure how he's done that. Ugbo back to Nesbitt again. And here's Cissé on the edge of the box. Ugbo, Nesbitt. Try desperately not to give away a penalty in this situation. They're so strong, MK Dons. They have so many players that are so good and physical. Oh, so good and physical that I'm really struggling just on pure physicality, let alone footballing ability in this game. Hopefully Darius Charles gets a foot in there. I tried to play that first time with Hara, but he's really struggling for stamina. He's just not necessarily reacting as quickly as I might want him to. He is due to come off for Scott, but that hasn't yet happened. The ball hasn't gone out of play. Will the ball be going out of play? Because MK Dons has scored a fourth goal. It won't, but it wasn't far away. 25 to go, still 3-1. Taylor. Inside there to Abdu. We'll give that to Quezzy. Just knock it back there nicely to Scott, who's just come on. Look for Lyle Taylor, who can drop the shoulder. Lyle Taylor in behind. Lyle Taylor, good save by Nichols. Looking to get ourselves back to within one goal of them. That's uh, not actually as good a cross as I hoped it would be from Harry Forrester. Lyle Taylor plays this over the top, looking for Quezzy, who will get there ahead of the defender. He's gotten away from him too. I just think this looking for Abdu. Abdu, sorry, Abdu. It's a mix of Ugbo and Abdu, their player and my player. Unfortunately, we're not able to pull one back there. That might have just left us the time to look for a third, but as we head into stoppage time now, I don't quite think a third's going to come. But we might still get a second, but it's a good save by the keeper to deny Greg Taylor. Kieran Agard going off. I brought on Andy Bartram as well, who will take this corner. And underneath it is Wooten, frustratingly, and Abdu can't get back down either. Darius Charles chugging away, trying to get there, but... Not able to do it. And there's the final whistle. It's a 3-1 defeat against MK Dons. That is really downheartening. I wasn't too perturbed by the uh, Everton result because I expected that. But I really wanted... I mean, it's not like I didn't have the chances. I wasn't completely outclassed. I just wasn't clinical. That's really disappointing. Very disappointing to lose to MK Dons. Right, back to the transfer window we go. Two more games at least, I think, left in the month. No transfer news between MK Dons and Blackpool, so we shall head into this Blackpool game and hope to do slightly better than we have done in previous games. They've picked up two points from their previous three games. We are on a run of uh, f at least three straight league defeats. Can't quite remember what happened in the last game in the previous episode, but we've lost three straight league games today. And, of course, the game against Everton in the FA Cup as well. So any, any point at all would be great here at home against Blackpool. But three would be absolutely superb. 20 minutes to go. Only the injury in the yellow card from the opening 15 to 20 minutes to this point. And it's a, a ball draw. It's a nil-nil against Blackpool. But it is a point, at least. It's an improvement on what we've had so far this season. Or so far this month, sorry. Riley Campbell is on his way back from first team injury. That's good news. Now, is he fit enough to be able to come straight back into the starting lineup? I'm not sure. I don't think he will. No, he's still... Uh, red and got the little uh, injury symbol next to him but hopefully by the time we get to the next game it's in a full week's time against I can't remember who it's against actually off the top of my head uh, is it no I 
can, yeah, Bradford. I could see the badge in my mind, but I couldn't remember which team it was. Uh, still 17th in the league, still training uh, multiple players. I'm trying not to train uh, loads of players because you guys reckon that it can genuinely affect their growth. So I'm actually just concentrating on the same players here with regards uh, training. And hopefully, over the course of uh, the first couple of seasons, players will grow quite naturally. We are looking like we're going to have a pretty steady first season here at Wimbledon, but next year we should be able to push for promotion, hopefully, with the introduction of more players and further growth. The transfer offer for Paul Robinson, which I shall be accepting from Barnett. Hopefully that means that he too will move on away from us. Still sat solidly mid-table. Lower mid-table, but still mid-table. You know, decent result against Bradford would be great. A monthly scouting update. Is coming in. 70 to 92 for Lucas Clark. Centre back or left back? If he's a centre back, that'd be great because I could do with a centre back, but I don't know what position he plays unless I call him up. I don't need a goalkeeper, so we shall be rejecting you, sir. Uh, 82 to 86. We'll give it another month for him. 65 to 91. I, I just I can't commit when it's that broad uh, spectrum. 72 to 94 is positive. We'll sign you. And 53 to 71, I shall just straight up say no to. Uh, let's see, what position were the two players that we actually just called up there? Let's have a quick look, shall we? Lucas Clark is a left back, not a centre back. Oh, God, that's frustrating. I'm not sure whether he can actually play at uh, centre back, though. We'll call him up so I can have a look in the squad report. Marcus Hughes is 76 to 90 on the right hand side. Good physicals, at least, or good acceleration and uh, sprint speed, at least, to start things off. We shall promote him up. And was it Harrison Clarksy, the other one I called out? I can't remember off the top of my head now. 70 to 78. Oh, he's the centre back, Logan McLean. Uh, the physicals aren't that bad. And I do need a centre back, so I'm going to keep him. I do need a young centre back. So I shall keep him there for now. We're still waiting to try and raise a little bit more money to get that extra scout. And I will filter in those youngsters into the uh, the makeup. I'll do that after. I'll do it after the episode because we've only got one game and then transfer deadline day left. Let's go play Bradford away from home and see if we can't. Oh, they're in good form actually. Two wins from their last three. Don't skip. I nearly skipped there. Don't skip. You tend to get injuries when you skip, apparently, according to you guys. So I won't skip. But will we get a result? They've picked up an injury, as did our last opponent's Blackpool. They've taken the lead, though, through Nicky Law. Can we fight back? No. Dominic Polian gives them a 2-0 lead, and it's going to be another defeat, it seems, against Black uh, Bradford, sorry, away from home. And indeed it is. Another defeat. It's not been a good month for us, January, has it? Tried my best to move players on, and we haven't been able to move on the number of players that I wanted to to raise a massive amount of extra funds. Hara continuing to grow, Bennett continuing to grow. I think 60 positioning is getting there now. We might find Bennett starting more often than George Long sooner rather than later, but let's progress to transfer deadline day and push through it. And then that'll be the end of today's episode. We'll have a squad report in the next one as well to ensure that uh, you guys can stay up to date with everything that goes on. There's been some massive deals in this window as well, to this point. Uh, Robinson sold, which is good news. Uh, I'm probably in the way, but Mario Acar or Mauro, sorry, Acardi has gone from Inter to Real Madrid for £93.9 million. Anthony Martial has gone to Spurs for 47.3, and Eric Dyer to Manchester City for £33 million, pounds. so some really shocking transfers going through. We'll have a look at uh, all of the major transfers at the end of the window, but we'll push a little bit further through. I'm just waiting for offers in for my guys, to be completely honest, and it doesn't look like we're actually going to get anything of any real note, to be fair, or even anything at all, judging by the first three hours and four hours. £230 million pounds spent, though, on transfer deadline day. £250 million pounds spent now on transfer deadline day. Will, well, Wilfred Zaha has gone for Borussia Dortmund for £38.6 million. Pounds. You can see it there in the in the top right slate. Oh, offer. Oh, oh it's a pre-contract for Tom Sauce. He's running out of contract in six months' time, so I, I've got him on the transfer list, but obviously if he leaves on a free, then there's not really too much I can do about that. I could offer him a contract, but then I might not be able to sell him anyway. Darius Charles... 
Do I offer them contracts? No, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Right, two emails. One, Tom Saws is leaving. Try someone for John Mees. Ah, oh, that's a big offer too. I will... N oh, do I negotiate or do I just accept? I'm just going to accept. Just to make sure we get the deal through, I could perhaps get another 500 grand or so, but I don't think it's going to make much difference. Please go through before the end of the window. Darius Charles has signed his contract and he's going to leave to go to Millwall. That's fine. Please sign. Please leave me, Meads. Oh, it's not going to get done, is it? It's not going to get done before the end of the window. Emil Forsberg's gone to Valencia for 41.7 million. That's, oh, that's infuriating. He's not going to go. It's not going to get done in time. Or is it, oh, Transfer Talks broke down. Let me guess, Transfer Talks broke down because it was the end of the window or they broke down because he didn't want to, or they just couldn't agree terms. Oh, it's so frustrating. So frustrating. Right, another monthly scouting report. Uh, 53, 73 will say no. 72 to 94 will give you another month, Reese Morgan. We'll give you another month so I can find out exactly where he's going to play. 56 to 74 I shall say no to as well, but... One positive there by Reece, uh, through Reese Morgan. And we've uh, still got a left back, a right back, a right back, a centre back and a cam. Now I am, let's, go and, let's go and hire another scout, shall we? How much money have we got available to us now, transfer budget-wise? £516,000. So I can go and hire probably a three-star. It's a three-star, two-star. I'm going to wait until I get a three-star, three-star. Just, I think they refresh every couple of weeks. So I'll wait until I can get a three-star, three-star, and then I'll go out and buy another one. And uh, I'll, I'll ask him to search either for strong players or for attackers so that we can get some centre-backs or some, uh, some strikers because I do need centre-backs and strikers. And you guys asked me to send him out for just three months at a time rather than a full nine months. So that I will do as well. Do let me know in the comment section where to send uh, my scout as well. We have been keeping things relatively domestic to start off with, and I think I will probably continue to do that. But I might look slightly further afield with this third scout. So let me know different countries you might want me to uh, to have a look at. But I'll have a, a quick look at the transfer history tab so you can see what's gone down in this window. Uh, I'll sort by fee, and we'll just go by date on the left-hand side. So Mario Cardi was this window, 93.9 million. These two were summer transfers, but Martial went to Tottenham, Forsberg to Leipzig on transfer deadline day. Um, Zaha to Dortmund. We've had Anthony Lopez to West Ham on transfer deadline day as well. Uh, Eric Dyer to Man City, we saw. Uh, Lars Bender to Schalke. Christian Pulisic to Leverkusen. That'll be why they bought Wilfred Zaha at Dortmund. El Shirawi to Manchester United on deadline day for £30.4 million. Robin has gone to Atletico Madrid, although that was a move that went through in the summer. Any other transfer window deals? Sorry, January transfer window deals. Uh, Adrian Rabio has gone to Stoke. Uh, Thiago Silva to Inter Milan. Of course, PSG signing from AC Milan. And he's now moved back to, uh, to Italy, to the other side of the San Siro. Uh, Hugo Mayo to Sevilla. Diego Perotti to Mucin Gladbach. Uh, Kramerich to AC Milan. Any other January deals here before we get towards the end? Jose Gaia to Manchester City. One that went through in December, weirdly, was Victor Ruiz to Liverpool. Uh, Mario Gaspar to Juventus. They signed a new right back. Spurs have sold Danny Rose to Paris Saint-Germain for £17.3 million. And that rounds out all of the transfers. Not the most successful of months for us, January. Which is pretty frustrating. But we are still... Pretty safe. Well, actually, no, we're four points above the drop now. That's not pretty safe, is it? Four points above the drop and 11 points off the playoffs. That's been a poor month for us. We need to improve in the remaining three or four that are left. We'll see if we can do that in the next one. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on more. I'll see you next time.